Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ted Carr here and today I'm going to be giving you the best self-improvement strategies I've ever used. Now these time-tested strategies are ones that I've used personally and gotten great results with and also ones that I've used with my coaching clients over the years. I've been a life improvement coach for many years. I've recently stopped doing it because rather than coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, I found I could just take the same information and give it to the masses all at once. So instead of spending an hour with one person, I can now spend an hour with a hundred people in a room or online in a video like this. So without further ado, let's get right into this. I just want to say though that one self-development strategy is going to help you a lot. But I'm going to be giving you 14 in this slideshow here, so you're about to be on another planet if you do everything that's advised. And I highly recommend doing everything that's advised in this slideshow because one self-development strategy is going to help a lot, but 14, it's going to help you 14 times as much. So you might as well do one of everything here. You're going to see which ones you like best, which ones you maybe not like so much, and which ones are going to help you more than others. But these are all really quick and easy things that you can do. And if you were to do every single one of the things I'm about to recommend, it could take you a couple hours to go through everything completely. But after those two hours, your life will never be the same again. So let's get right into this here. First one is to brainstorm. So simply take a piece of paper, a blank sheet of paper, and a pen or pencil, and in the middle of that paper, draw a big circle. And in the middle of that circle, you're going to write down my desires. And then out of the circle, you're going to draw about five lines. And at the end of each line, you're going to write an area of life that you would like to improve. This could be relationships. This could be your business or finances, this could be your fitness, this could be your health, this could be your art or creative expression. Just write out five areas of life that you'd like to improve. And then underneath each of those areas, write out three or four things that you want in that area. So if your area is finances, let's say, then you're going to write down some desires like, I have enough money to last me until I'm dead, or I make $100,000 a year make something up that you'd really like and just allow yourself to think big here allow yourself to think big this is what brainstorming is all about write out your desires and uh just get clear on that and if you're unsure about what you want which most people typically are unsure of what they want surprisingly enough then just start writing out what you don't want and immediately as soon as you write out what you don't want like let's say you don't want to be broke then you find the opposite of that and you start writing that out so if you don't want to be broke then you want to be financially independent so you start writing out all these things about financial independence. Or if you don't want to be fat, then you write out, I want to be fit or I want to be lean or I want to be muscular or whatever it is. So if you know what you don't want, then you know what you do want. So you can start there if you want. But anyway, that's brainstorming. Just take pen to paper and brainstorm. Get it all out of your head onto paper where you can actually see it. Next up is goal setting. So take each of your desires that you wrote out in the brainstorm session and give them a clearly defined endpoint. So this you're gonna need a new sheet of paper on the top of the sheet of paper, you're gonna write out something like my top goals. And if one of your goals on the brainstorm sheet was to get fit, then here on the goal setting page, you're gonna write out, I'm able to run a 10K in under one hour. So that's a specific goal that has a clearly defined endpoint. Clearly defined endpoint, meaning like, I'm able to run 10K, that's the distance, in under one hour. So you know when you've accomplished it or not. Another one would be like, I earn $100,000 in 2018, in the year 2018. So that's a clearly defined endpoint. If you can earn $100,000, then that goal can be checked off. So give each of your desires from the brainstorm session, give them each a goal with a clearly defined endpoint. This is so important to give your mind something to work towards, an objective endpoint like this. Next up is core clarity. So you want to ask yourself the following questions, and then you want to give yourself crystal clear answers. Now, these questions can range, you can add a whole bunch of questions here, you can subtract a whole bunch of questions, but some of the questions to get started on would be like, how do I wanna feel when I wake up? What do I wanna think about first thing in the morning? Who do I wanna see first thing in the morning? What do I want to do first thing in the morning? What do I want to do after that? And what do I want to do after that? 
Who do I want to help? How do I want to help? What do I want to do for money? What do I want to do with my friends? How do I want to feel with my lover, my wife or my husband? What do I want to do right before bed? How do I want to feel as I fall asleep? What do I want to be thinking about as I fall asleep? So giving answers to those questions is going to provide a lot of clarity. And make sure that these answers actually excite you from your core. Next up is a timeline evidence. So here you're going to grab a piece of paper and you're going to write down the following. You're going to write down ages 0 to 5. Then you're going to write down ages 6 to 10. And then ages 11 to 15. And do that all the way up until however old you are right now. So if you're 35 years old right now, you're going to write down, the last section you're going to write down is ages 30 to 35. Once you do that, in each of these sections, in each of these age categories, you're going to write down all the things that you accomplished or experienced for the first time. So between ages 0 and 5, you might think, oh, I don't really remember anything back then. But if you think about what happens during that age, it's quite obvious. You learn to walk, you learn to talk, you learn to go potty by yourself, you perhaps even learn to read a little bit. You, le you may learn how to use a computer, but if you're watching this right now and you're 35 years old, then you probably didn't have, even have a computer back then, but you know what I mean. There are things that you know that you did between ages 0 and 5. And then you go down the list, you write down everything you did and experienced between ages 6 and 10, and between ages 11 and 15, and then between ages you know 16 to 20, a lot changed. You probably learned how to drive a car, maybe you had your first girlfriend or boyfriend, maybe you uh, did drugs for the first time. Just write down everything that you experienced for the first time, and just go all the way back from ages zero to however old you are now. And the purpose of this is to show you that so much can change in just four or five years. So much can change. You can go from not being able to know how to talk or walk to being able to talk and walk. You're going to go from not knowing how to drive a car to driving across the country. You're going to be going from never having kissed a girl or never having kissed a guy to losing your virginity. Like a lot can happen in a very short period of time. And looking back, you're also going to see how drastically different your life was five years ago. And it's going to give you proof and evidence that your life is going to change massively in the next five years as well. So keep that in mind that no matter what kind of goals you've set for yourself, they're possible because everything in the past was very unrealistic. And now going forward, things might seem unrealistic, but it's totally okay because that's how life is. So this timeline is gonna give you evidence that change is possible. Next up is state changers. So here you can spend two to five minutes changing your mental and emotional state with MDT. MDT is mental discipline training. So. A nice state changer that I like to use a lot is the arm hold. So you're going to sit cross-legged or just sit on a chair, however you're sitting, and you're going to close. You're going to set a timer for five minutes. And once the timer is running, make sure it beeps when it's done. But once the timer is running, you're going to close your eyes and put your arms out to your side, with your fingers up to the sky, and you're going to hold that there. And you're going to feel the burn in your shoulders, the top of your shoulders, you might even feel it in your neck a bit or your back and your arms are going to start burning after a couple minutes but you've got to have the mental discipline to hold your arms out for the entire time. Once the timer beeps, you're going to stick your arms up in the air and celebrate success. This is a great mental state changer and uh, there are many other state changes that you can use like cold showers or saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you rapidly and building up appreciation like that or just do, doing some hardcore fitness like some heavy squats or deadlifts or bench press. Um, there are so many different state changes that you can do. Another great one is just meditating. Sitting in meditation is a great state changer. Um, but there are so many different ones you can do and I highly recommend starting with the arm hold. The five minute arm hold is a fantastic state changer. And the reason you want to do this, these state changes is because you realize that you can go from feeling and thinking a certain way in a certain habit route to then all of a sudden thinking and feeling a completely different way within just a matter of minutes by changing your state. And when you change the way you feel, you're going to start changing the, the actions that you take. So if normally you wake up and you feel like crap and you go for a coffee or go for a muffin, here instead you wake up and do some MDT, some mental discipline training, you're going to feel so successful, so accomplished after doing that arm hold that you're going to want to go out for a run after and go drink a bunch of water and have a fruit smoothie instead of going for the coffee and muffin. So state changing is a fantastic way of changing your actions throughout the day. Next up is Dream Team. 
You want to create a list of five or ten people who are alive right now who you'd love to work, live, or hang out with on a regular basis. Now, personally, when I did this, it was scary what happened. I wrote down a list of people who I'd love to work with or love to team up with, and over the course of a couple of years, these people started reaching out to me. They wanted to hang out and work with me, and I ended up either living with them or creating projects with them and, and, and traveling with them. And it was just like, by the time it happened, it was like, well, duh, of course, like I'm on their level. But when I wrote down my list of dream team, these people were not even in my, they weren't even in my uh, ballpark. They were just like, they're real inspirational people to me. They were, they were like people who I'd love to have as a mentor, but then they ended up becoming good friends. So write out your dream team of people you love to work and hang out with, and they can become your good friend indeed. Next up is your mentor arsenal. This one's a bit different, kind of similar, but a bit different because these are people who are either alive or dead right now who you can go to online and watch a whole bunch of their videos or listen to a whole bunch of their audio programs. People like Brian Tracy, people like Jim Rohn, people like Earl Nightingale, people like Napoleon Hill, people like Darren Hardy. There are so many people out there online who you can go to every day for motivation and inspiration to stay on track. This is your mentor arsenal and you've got to have these people in your life because you really are the way you are now because of the way you were raised. Not just by your parents, but also by your aunts and uncles and grandparents and your teachers and your friends at school. But what if you were raised by five or ten of the most successful people on the planet? What if the five or ten of the most successful and positive and healthy and fit people on the planet were the ones who raised you? Do you think you would also be healthy and fit? and happy and positive and successful? I think so. So you can find people who have what you want, who are teaching the things that you really resonate with, and you can absorb their information every single day through audiobooks and through YouTube videos. So write out your list of five or 10 people that you wanna to go to every day for motivation and inspiration, and be sure to consume their content. I would consume their content at the exclusion of all other content. So rather than going on YouTube and watching just the latest trending videos, you go on YouTube and you type in Brian Tracy or Jim Rohn, or Earl Nightingale, and you consume their content at the exclusion of all others. This one is going to be huge for you guys. It's like giving you a new a new family of, uh, of, of input. So fantastic idea here. Next up is a strength finder. With strength finders, you want to write out a list of everything you're good at and everything you enjoy doing, and see if you can match those up. So if you're really good at, let's say, gardening you're really really good at gardening and you also enjoy gardening that's something that you enjoy doing then that's a match right there you probably like you're worth a lot in the gardening arena but if you're really if you if you're really good at uh if you're really good at bowling like you, you can just you can you can strike out every single time you can knock out all the pins you're really good at it but you don't enjoy doing it then skip it cross it off the list so you want to find things that you're both really good at and things that you really jo enjoy doing. Next up, we've got landmines. So with landmines, you want to list out all the things that you know can bring you down in a day. These are things like, again, watching trending videos on YouTube. These are things like it's just scrolling through Facebook, scrolling through Instagram. These are things like gossiping or complaining. These are things that you want to avoid, and it's good to become aware of what you need to avoid so that you can actually avoid them. Um, once you've determined what these landmines are for you, it's good to then find replacements for them. So instead of complaining, maybe you want to, anytime you think of complaining, you want to actually appreciate that person or that thing just a little bit. So instead of saying like, oh, the traffic here is so bad, you can say, well, actually, the air quality here is, is actually quite good because there are a lot of electric cars on the road or something like that. Or you can say, you know, I, I hate this cold climate here. The, the climate is so bad. You can instead say like, oh, we actually get really good um, temperate fruit here. We get really great apples and squashes and things like that. So just keep in mind that, that the, for every con there's also a pro and be proactive you know if you're going to complain about something nobody wants to hear you complain ever so instead they want to hear hear and help you find solutions so instead of complaining or instead of you know talking crap about someone find a solution and talk about that and just be aware of these landmines so you can avoid them at all costs and then find replacements for them so instead of scrolling through facebook maybe you want to um write out 
your, instead of scrolling through Facebook and seeing other people's day in the lives, maybe you're going to write out your ideal day in the life. And that's the next one right here, your ideal day in the life. So imagine and write out your ideal day in the life from, wake, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. And be sure to go into detail on this. So here you could say, I wake up at 6 in the morning to the sunrise and I immediately do my, my gratitude, my thank you, thank you, thank yous. And then I go into a 20, 25 minute meditation and then I do my five minute arm hold and then I do some yoga with my wife or my husband, whatever the case may be. And then I go for a swim, then I come home for breakfast and I hang out with my children and then I get on the computer and start creating some awesome content for this new job that I love or my new company that I've just started that's doing really, really well. Like just, you're writing this as if it's the future but you wanna write it as if you're living it now. So. Write out this ideal day in life as if money and time were no obstacle at all. Well, you've got 24 hours, so make everything you want happen in those imaginary 24 hours. And uh, what you're going to find happen here is similar with the dream team thing. Like Once you write out your ideal day in life, it's just a matter of time before you start living it. Because if you write down in your ideal day in life that you wake up at 6 a.m. and you start off the morning with gratitude and meditation, well, guess what? You can do that tomorrow right away. You can set the clock right now for 6 a.m. for tomorrow and you wake up and you do your gratitude and your meditation. So you can start living your ideal day in the life tomorrow, but it's good to get clear on what exactly it is first. Next up is gratefulness. So yeah, you want to fill yourself up with greatness by becoming grateful. And to do this is quite easy. Every day, you write out a list of five things that you're appreciating right now in your life. It could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could be a piece of technology in your house like the camera or your voice recorder or your iPhone or Samsung phone or your laptop or or maybe it's the weather. Maybe you're really grateful for the weather or the fruit that's coming in this time of year. Write out everything that, you're, that you can appreciate right now and another great way of, of filling yourself up with gratitude is just by doing that state changer I mentioned earlier saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you and you set a timer for two minutes and you just look around the room and you start saying thank you, thank you, thank you and everything you look at, when you look at something and you say the words thank you out loud, you actually feel the appreciation for that thing even if it's an inanimate object or whatever. You can start appreciating the candles or the lights or the wallpaper in your house just by saying thank you, thank you, thank you and the cool thing is the more things you start deliberately appreciating the more you have to appreciate. It's like it's just it just works like that so you just start appreciating things by saying thank you thank you thank you and looking at them and then you're actually going to appreciate them it, it just it works like that so give it a try next up is a checklist so on your checklist like every pilot before they take off in flight they they have a checklist they go through and they check everything make sure it's all working optimally you can do this for your own day as well you can have a morning checklist you can have a midday checklist and you can have an evening checklist perhaps in your evening checklist you have something like um, you, you plug in all your electronics before the next day or you prepare prepare lunch for tomorrow by just cutting up some fruit or something or maybe you want to clean up the house for five minutes or you write out a quick plan for tomorrow or you go over your goals or you do a 20 minute meditation right before bed so create a checklist of everything you want to do each morning every midday and every evening as well and go through that checklist each day and just tick off things the checklist should take you no more than 20, 30 minutes to complete. So have a just short list here and uh, this way you won't forget to do the important things because it's easy to get caught up in the day and forget to do the important things. But the, the two times of the day when you have complete control over your day is first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Nobody's bugging you those first, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes in the morning, hopefully, and no one's bugging you the last 5, 10, 15 minutes before bed. So if you only got 15 minutes of total free time each morning, each evening, then create a 15 minute checklist and go through everything each night like that. And this way you'll feel like you're, you're really make, staying on top of things. Next up is the voice inside your head. So a lot of people are not consciously aware of the thoughts that they're thinking, but typically the thoughts that we're thinking are words. We're, we're thinking, we're asking ourselves questions like, oh, why am I so stupid? Or how come this person's such an idiot? Or, oh, what do I want to eat for lunch today? Or, oh, I wonder where I'm going to go this. Or, oh, do I like this color? Do I like that color? Am I going to email this person back? Should I get back to this person? We have this whole conversation going on in our head at all times. We've got this voice inside our head. So if you're finding yourself feeling stressed out or worried or anxious or frustrated about something, just realize that it's 100% because of the voice inside your head. And you can create a new voice inside your head 
that repeats the little mantra over and over and over again. Something as simple as like love, 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 love. Or thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or life is awesome, life is awesome, life is awesome, life is awesome. Just keep repeating that voice in your head. Uh, you can either do that with your own imagination or you can listen to an audiobook and just let the audiobook be the voice in your head. Listen to positive, uplifting, motivational audiobooks and let that be the voice in your head. And I highly recommend if you find a great audiobook, listen to it on repeat. If you find any great content, consume it on repeat because once is not enough. If you hear someone compliment you once in your life, that's, one compliment might not be enough to forever boost your self-esteem or whatever, but if you're constantly hearing compliments on a regular basis, then that can help keep your esteem boosted. Not that you should rely on compliments for boosting your self-esteem, but you know what I mean? And if you hear a negative comment just once in your life, that might not be enough to, to put you down. But if you're constantly hearing negative comments about you every single day on repeat, then that can that can bring you down. So you want, you can bring yourself up and you can bring yourself down just by repeating a certain voice in your head. So it's important to deliberately bring yourself up and keep yourself focused on your goals with a specific voice in your head. So again, either create your own voice in your head with a certain mantra or listen to a good audiobook on a repeat. And lastly here, we've got dietary design from the vine. So eating a whole fresh, ripe, raw, juicy fruit diet will ensure optimal performance day in and day out for you. I believe that food is mood. If you're thinking awesome thoughts, the chances of you feeling an awesome mood is 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 quite high. It's right there. Like if you're thinking beautiful thoughts, you're gonna be in a beautiful mood. But if you're eating really shitty food, then you're gonna experience a really shitty mood. So great foods equate to great moods. When you eat high vibrational foods, you experience high vibrational moods, which is why it's important to get most, if not all of your calories from whole fresh, ripe, raw fruit. My favorite is juicy fruit. I love apples. I love nectarines. I love mangoes. I love papayas. I love grapes. I love oranges. I love melons. Things like this. Every other animal in nature eats a raw food diet. As soon as you start eating a raw food diet as well, you feel really connected with everything out there. So I highly recommend eating from the vine and trusting that you're going to feel divine as a result. And if you want to give the raw food diet a shot, then you can sign up right now for a 30-day raw food challenge. It's quite easy to sign up. You just go to the website right there. And as soon as you sign up, then on the first of the month, on the first of November, or whatever month it's starting, then you're going to receive an email every day from me for the entire month and I'm going to be mentoring you, I'm going to be coaching you, I'm going to be giving you everything I've got. Everything that you need to know to succeed on a raw food diet, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a complete shopping list, I'm going to give you a recipe book, I'm going to give you the tips and tricks, tips and tricks and strategies to succeed on raw food and you're also going to join a community of other people who are on the same day as you. So if you're on day two, everyone there right there in the community is going to be on day two as well. Once you reach day 20, everyone in the community is going to be on day 20 as well. In the Facebook community, you're going to be able to chat along and uh, team up and help each other out with that. So if you want to be held accountable, if you want some guidance, if you want to know what the right foods to eat are and which foods to absolutely avoid, then definitely want to give this 30-day raw food challenge a shot. I hope to see you guys in there, and if you're interested in any more content from me, well, subscribe to this channel and you'll be sure to get it. Thanks so much for watching guys, this is the end. Adios.